don't rely on AI by itself. Always have your human in the loop. So I like to use the burger method where you have the bread, human, then you have the testy, AI, and then you have another slice of bread, the giant burger, human, and then AI, and then human again. So by being able to take myself out from the workflow and look at my own workflow in a really critical manner, I can then decide where to add AI into my workflow. But I'm always checking that every single step at, at every single point in time, there's always that human in the loop. This ensures that you are really getting quality content. You are still activating here what's in your mind and you're able to apply that critical thinking skill while using AI to basically streamline that process. What you don't want to do is to rely on AI to come up with that end result and not review the work. And that's how you ensure quality while increasing your productivity. Welcome to AI and Marketing Unpacked, where we simplify AI for impactful marketing. I'm your host, Mike Alden, here to guide you through the world of artificial intelligence and its transformative impact on marketing strategies. Each episode will break down AI concepts into manageable insights and explore practical applications that can supercharge your marketing efforts. Whether you're an experienced marketer or just starting to explore the potential of AI, this podcast will equip you with the knowledge and tools you need to succeed. So tune in and let's unlock the power of AI together. Greetings program. Welcome back to AI and Marketing Unpacked, where I selfishly use this time to pick the brains of experts at keeping up with and integrating or layering artificial intelligence into social media, content, advertising, search, and other areas of digital marketing. Oh, and you get to learn too. Subscribe to be shown how to prepare yourself and your brand for this AI revolution and come out ahead. Now, are you tired of pouring hours into content creation only to see lackluster results? What if I told you there's a way to supercharge your content strategy, making it more effective and efficient than ever before? Welcome to AI and Marketing Unpacked. And today, we're diving into the game-changing world of AI-powered content optimization. We've all heard the buzz about AI, but how can it actually improve our content's quality and relevance? More importantly, how can it help us create content that truly converts? These are the questions keeping marketers up at night, and we're about to get some answers. To guide us through this AI-driven content revolution, we have a true expert in the field. I am thrilled to introduce Audrey Chia, a powerhouse in the world of content strategy and AI marketing solutions. Audrey has made waves in the industry, working with major brands to transform their content strategies using cutting-edge AI tools. With a track record of driving remarkable results for her clients, Audrey has become a go-to authority on leveraging AI for marketing success. Her innovative approaches have not only boosted content quality, but have also significantly improved performance and conversion rates for businesses across various sectors. Hey, Audrey, welcome to the show. Thank you for that amazing introduction and thank you for having me, Mike. It's my pleasure. I'm so glad that you could be here. So could you start by just walking us through your journey in when it comes to AI-powered content optimization? What sparked your interest in this field? Yeah, so interestingly, right, my background was in conversion copywriting and brand advertising. So I'm sort of someone who loves to pick up different skill sets, right? And just last year, I launched my own consultancy, Cools with Copy, and at the same time, ChatGPT launched. So to my horror, my client actually dropped me a note and he said, Audrey, you're going to be placed. And he sent me the link to ChatGPT. So I had to decide what to do with that piece of information, right? I was like, what am I going to do now? So I knew I had two options. One would be to ignore it and fight, you know, the current. Or the second option would be to say, you know what? I'm just going to learn how to embrace it and ride the tide. And that's where I, why I'm here today. That is an amazing story. And I would say that that was uh, a bit of a fortuitous encounter because it's really exploded, I think, your your brand and your, and your business. So let's talk about content. And I would love for you to just kind of start high level. How are you defining quality when it comes to content? Because we can talk about AI creating great content and, or not, but that's a very subjective term. I'd love to know your take on it. And to add to that, how do you see AI enhancing content? Yeah, great question, right? So as a conversion copywriter, quality content to me is something that, of course, converts. I love writing landing pages at, you know, creating LinkedIn content strategy, right? And when you see results, 
that's how you know it works. Now, the reason why some people are not able to create quality content is because they don't even know what that looks like. So when they ask AI to create a piece of content and they don't know if it's good or bad, they think that, oh, you know, just because it's long, it should be good, right? And then they put it out there and it doesn't work because why it sounds AI. Why? Because it's not tapping into the audience inside. And why? Because it's not actually bringing out the product's unique selling points, right? So content doesn't always convert, but quality content does. If you're able to understand, you know, strategy, audience insights, positioning, all the things that you need to actually be a great copywriter. And we're going to get into some specifics in a moment about how to actually level up your content. But I'm, I'm curious if you could tell us what kinds of AI tools you're using, what platforms you recommend for content optimization, and if there are any unique benefits that one might offer over another. Yeah, definitely. So for myself, I have tried so many different tools, right? Initially, when I first started in my career, right? I tried all the AI copywriting tools because I wanted to see if they could streamline my workflows, right? So in the beginning, I even tried 10 different AI copywriting tools and I ranked each of them based on how human they sounded, based on the quality of work, based on whether I think they would convert. But what I've learned over time is if you know how to prompt, you don't actually need a hundred different AI copywriting tools. If you know how to prompt, if you know how to teach AI how you think as a writer, how to get AI from point A to point B through a series of events, then you can get super high quality output even without using an AI tool that's previewed. And I actually think that that is a more powerful way of using AI because now you're able to have human in the loop, right? So you're able to use AI and yet still include your kind of feedback, your strategies, your iteration, and then when you get to the final output, you realize that it's a lot higher quality than just using a plug and play process or a prompt that's already inbuilt in the software. So for me, I love using ChatGPT. Claude is my favorite for copywriting. Sometimes I experiment with Meta AI or Gemini because they all have different use cases. Yeah, in fact, we've had previous episodes talking about prompting actually gross for one that I'll link to in the show notes for you folks because we, we've talked at length about how important prompting is. And a corollary to that, to your point, Audrey, is that if you're really good at prompting, you don't need a tool that's basically a layer on top of ChatGPT anyways, that's simply formatting the responses and the inputs that you're giving. It's asking you for information about a customer's persona. It's asking you, you know, do you want to do a blog post or do you want to do sales copy? And then it's trying to create those prompts in the back end for you. If you know what you're doing, you can skip all that and jump right into getting the work done. And I was actually going to ask you about which, which major language models you were using. I completely agree. Claude seems to be the best, you know, for, for really, really great copywriting. Have you used the, the newest version of Claude and are you using the paid version of Claude? Yes, there is a difference. <laughs> Just like in GPT, the paid version and the newest version would tend to perform better. So I even tested like GPT versus Claude. I gave it my same processes, similar prompts, and I took a look at the output, right? So GPT, even, even though we are at GPT 4.0 now, unfortunately, the copy still sounds really AI-like. When I say AI-like, it still uses, you know, big marketing stuffy language. Like, for example, supercharge or, you know, leveraging or attention. It's not this, it's that. It still happens even right now, right? And you would think that AI has evolved. Whereas for Claude, when you prompt right and you get a quality output, it sounds really natural. It doesn't have these big fluffy tones. And what you can do is when you give it feedback, you would realize that it takes the feedback really well and gets you, you know, content that sounds a lot closer to what you're looking for. But of course, remember to review and refine the work. Those are two huge differences that, that I've noticed as well using ChatGPT versus Claude with ChatGPT, I would ask it to create some copy and it would often start with a scene setting hook, which would be to say something like in the digital marketing landscape, which after it said that 10 times, it, it's kind of nauseous making. So I say, stop using scene setting hooks and it would still do it, even though I told it not to. Whereas to your point, Claude rarely does that to begin with because it's using more human, you know, we don't really talk like that. 
in normal conversation. And if you tell it not to do it, it won't do it. Yes. Appreciate you doing that. I, I, I want to point out some advice that I heard from Paul Reitzer on the Artificial Intelligence Show, where he said he's often using multiple large language models at the same time and putting the same prompts into both and seeing what he gets. Not even, you know, you, you mentioned testing, but he's like doing this as a matter of course throughout his day. If he's asking it for strategic advice or brainstorming or content gap analysis, whatever the case, he's just always using two tools simultaneously and, and seeing which one might be the better response for that particular moment. So folks listening, that's something else you can try. But Audrey, one question I had for you, because we we're talking about content optimization. How can AI improve content relevance? And why is that crucial for conversion rates? Yeah. So in my case, I probably would define it in a different way, right? For me, content optimization would be how do you cap on audience insights? And being relevant mean, would also mean being relevant to your user so that they get to click that buy now button, which I love, right? AI is really good when you need to basically streamline your processes. So let me give you an example, right? I help my clients craft high conversion ads. I took their ads from just a 1% click-through rate to a 4 to 5% click-through rate because of this process, right? And what we did, right, was to really understand the and detailed audience insights. So when they first started, they were just crafting the ads based on ideas in their head, which is fine. But what you actually want to do is to understand your prospects, your audience, their pain points, their desires, their motivations. This is where AI is really good, right? I try to distill all that information. So we have different streams of information. For example, I have audience transcripts, one hour long conversation, you know, with my clients. And then you have different kinds of insights that power packed into an AI transcript. You use a, an AI note taker like Sybil, for example, right? Or Fireflies that gives you a full transcript, which you can then add to chat GPT. And they start distilling the key insights that you see across different transcripts. So that's one thing you can do, right? The other thing you can do is you could go to Reddit or you could go to any other social listening platform and also download the kinds of comments that you see there, get AI to do a full review, a thorough review, figure out what are the things people are looking for, what they don't like about certain things. And now you have so much information to work with. And that's your starting point. So I use AI in phase one. Now in phase two, what you want to do is also figure out what is your product's key value proposition? And for those of, pe of you who may not be marketers or copywriters, this can be a very daunting process because sometimes my clients would be like, but Audrey, I, I love all, all hundred things about my product. Everything is great. And it can be tricky to differentiate, you know, a benefit and a feature, right? So this is where AI can also be handy where you're having that conversation and saying, look, this is all the information about my product. Tell me what are the three things you would prioritize and why, right? And then you give it enough context of your audience, you give it enough context about your company, and then you have that conversation. So don't take the information at face value. Make sure you are also looking at it in a critical mind and then figuring out, okay, I agree with this. I agree with that, but maybe this, not so much. So make that decision, but use AI in the process to help you bounce ideas and come up with a key value proposition or strategic roadmap for your company. Then the final thing you want to do is get AI to come up with different messaging strategies by combining your audience insight, by combining your key value proposition, and even combining your competitive analysis to finally give you different messaging angles, and then craft different options for each. So it's like a four-step process that usually would take a copywriter a super long time, but with AI, you can streamline this entire process, get it out a lot quicker, get it out that convert a lot quicker and also see results. Love the use of AI for that level of, of analysis, particularly taking transcripts from your client consulting calls. Oh, there's so many terrific uses for that. I'm doing something similar actually with these podcast episodes. I'll feed the AI the transcripts from all the past podcast episodes, and then I will ask the AI to help me identify what are the top topics and themes that at least three or four guests are talking about spanning all these episodes. And obviously the more episodes I get into it, the more challenging that's going to be for somebody like me as a human to simply identify, oh yeah, in a moment, sure, these are the top 10 topics that we've talked about across 30, 40, 50 episodes. I'm not going to be able to do that. But then of course I can pull out quotes from the transcript and do all kinds of other wonderful things that I can use in all kinds of 
marketing efforts. So very similar approach. Love that. Could you share a success story maybe of one of the clients that you worked with and how you've used AI to help them see actual performance gains when it comes to their content? Yeah. So this is basically an interesting use case that you can consider. There's two parts to it, right? One is about streamlining processes. The other one is about creating high quality content. So I work with a crowdfunding platform, right? Where we're actually writing different campaigns for our beneficiaries or clients. This process used to be really manual. As you can imagine, it's about understanding everything from our client and then being able to write a compelling story. Now you must also know that not everyone is trained to write in a marketing way, right? Some people are better at writing things really factually, but then again, is it really effective? If someone reads your campaign and they're just the, you know, factual bits of information, how likely are they to convert, right? So those are things you need to know whenever you're trying to create content. Does the tone of voice, style of writing match what your consumer expects? And will they want to take action after reading your piece of content? So what I did was to create a mini AI agent, a mini AI bot that then allows us to re-optimize that piece of content for the campaign pages. And the beautiful part is I train it with a specific framework based on a top performing kind of campaign write-up, right? And then I broke it down and I have a framework for it. So now when you have a very, very factual campaign write-up through the AI bot, you will be able to get a much more human sounding campaign that appeals to people's emotions, right? And since we have made those updates, we also saw an increase in conversion together with our advertising and other efforts. So yes, it's a combination of different marketing efforts, but being able to use AI will help you to streamline that process and equip your different team members with the same skill sets as the head copywriter or head marketer would otherwise have to, you know, teach them or do it all, all by herself or himself. Got it. And one of the things I picked up on there was that you were doing a lot of pre-work to you, before you even started to try to get output out of the AI, which is something we talked about a lot on this show. Folks, we're talking with Audrey Chia about the impact that AI is having on content marketing strategies and tactics. And while I cut still for more questions for her, let me share with you the tool that I'm using to help brainstorm new tactics, evaluate my content strategies, and more. This episode of AI and Marketing Unpacked is brought to you by Magi, your gateway to making generative AI incredibly simple and accessible. Wondering how to seamlessly integrate AI into your marketing strategy without getting bogged down by complexities? That's exactly where Magi shines. It provides user-friendly AI solutions that empower marketers just like you to innovate and elevate your campaigns without needing a degree in data science. Imagine. Having the power to generate creative content, insightful marketing data analysis, or even personalized customer communications, all at the touch of a button. Magi isn't just about providing tools. It's about transforming your approach to marketing with AI that's tailor-made to be straightforward and effective. So whether you're looking to boost your content creation process or want deeper insights into your marketing performance, Magi makes it all possible with a few clicks. No fuss, no hassle, just results. Ready to simplify your AI journey? Visit Magi today to learn how their solutions can revolutionize the way you engage with your audience. Don't just market, market smarter with Magi. Tap the link in the show notes. So Audrey, you're working with lots of clients. I know you see other marketers, other businesses using AI online. What are some of the common mistakes that you're seeing these businesses and these marketers make, particularly in their content strategies? Yes, number one, a lot of them don't have a content strategy. Yeah, content is putting AI content out. I'm just, you might have seen some of those. So unfortunately, some people feel that by putting more content out, you're going to get yourself, you know, put yourself out there and people are going to know about you, right? It's true to a certain degree, but at the same time, I would like to contest that if your content quality isn't that great, if people know that it's super AI, right? Are they going to believe you? Are they going to trust you? Are they going to want to read your content? That's a question mark, correct? So what I have noticed is that you see a lot more AI-generated content that is extremely AI-like. The reason why people are doing so, again, my assumption is they don't know what 
quality content looks like, right? So when you put someone who's not trained as a writer, who doesn't have their foundation set, and you ask them to use AI to generate headlines, they'll be like, wow, these hundred headlines are great. You know, there are so many options here. But my question is, do these headlines actually convert? Whereas if you have someone who has put in years of work actually understanding the craft of copywriting, the art of conversion, you know, the psychology of persuasion, that person is going to look at the hundred headlines in a very different manner. And that person is going to be like, hey, you know what, all of these hundred headlines, let's only test three, right? And that three will probably be the most impactful of all hundred. So the difference is in putting content out for the sake of it versus putting content out in a very strategic manner with the help of AI. Absolutely perfect answer. We are absolutely going to click that out and use that. They don't have a strategy. That's the number one problem. Couldn't agree more. So we've got a strategy. We're working with someone like you. We are not only figuring out with AI what content to create, but we're using AI to improve and optimize the content that we already have created. How does that impact SEO and performance? Are there specific metrics that you've seen consistently improve through these kinds of activities? So I do know of other SEO experts who have been great in their fields and using AI on a daily basis. On my end, I'm more of a conversion copywriter, so I don't touch on that. But a lot of my clients have also shared that with AI, they have managed to reduce their workflows and processes with up to 70%, you know, and this is me having conducted a couple of training courses. So you might think that, hey, Audrey, but you're a copywriter and marketer. Of course you use AI. In fact, I have thought AI and how to use AI for, you know, copywriting and marketing to many people. And they're using the exact skill sets in different functions in their business, whether it's operations, whether it's, you know, campaign management, right? Whether it's finance, even they are actually using AI in their day to day and saying to me that they have saved so much time. And with that time now, they can now focus on higher level thinking, higher level strategy. So AI isn't just for a specific group of audience. It is for everyone. If you understand the foundations and fundamentals, you will be able to get the results that you're looking for. That is such a great point. We're not necessarily looking for AI to create better content than we might have created ourselves. We're looking for AI to save us time. We did an entire episode with Andy Crestina where he walked us through how to use AI to do a content gap analysis, which would also be fantastic for SEO. Let's find out what content we've talked about in our website, kind of like what I was talking about with the podcast, but you, you could look at a thousand articles that you published and the AI is not only going to help you understand what you've talked about, but it will help you identify what you haven't yet talked about that maybe you should. And that's not necessarily going to create better content for you, but it's going to save you a heck of a lot of time because a human might spend a couple of weeks doing a manual content gap analysis where they've used a spreadsheet and they've listed every single article and they've manually identified, okay, what's the theme of this article? Let's bucketize them and then do some analysis. AI yeah, could do all that in seconds. So I, I really appreciate you hammering home that point. But let's talk about human creativity. Because you kind of mentioned if we're saving time, that frees us up to do higher level activity. What's the role then that human creativity plays as part of this AI enhanced content workflow? Yes, I feel very strongly about this topic because I, for one, came from the world of advertising. I love creativity, right? Even for me right now, and when I'm using AI, I see it as a creative way to solve problems, right? So human creativity to me is something that cannot be replaced and will actually continue to thrive. Why do I say that? Now, as we grow, you would see more and more people using AI to create content. People are going to be competing with quantity. And of course, AI is going to sound less and less like AI, right? So we will come to a point in time where there could potentially be content overload. This is where as brand or as individuals, you need to think, how would you stand out in a saturated, overcrowded market filled with content? And that's where human creativity, story, being personal comes in, right? So brands who are able to still paint that picture of who they are, what they stand for in a unique way that can resonate with their audience will stand out and rise above crowd of kind of like, you know, sameness, which is why 
I think being able to have that creative mind, telling stories, coming up with interesting campaign angles, being, you know, personal even, is going to really, really help brands and individuals um, in our near future. Could not agree more. That's, that's really the basis for why we even have this show, is to help marketers understand how to adapt and adopt AI and give themselves back time and other kinds of, of benefits so that they can be more creative, more strategic in their thinking and not just be rushing to the next campaign and the next campaign. Now, it's funny because I, I, I'm very transparent about how I use AI to help me build out these shows and come up with these questions. And it always tries to put in this question that I now leave in because I find it funny. It, it, it wants me to ask you to look ahead and see how you see AI evolving in content marketing space over the next few years. And I'm laughing because nobody can predict anything with AI a few years yeah. on the road. But let's say in the next six to 12 months, how do you see AI and content marketing evolve? Yes. I think one interesting thing that I have noticed, right, is the, the increase in personalization of content, right? You're already seeing that in ad. You're being served a specific ad based on your interests, you know, based on your profile, based on what AI thinks you are. And you get specific content tailored in a certain way that taps on those desires. Of course, as a marketer, I love that because I'm like, yes, now I can be super focused. But as a consumer and, you know, as an individual, I would probably be a little more hesitant. And, and I don't, it, it doesn't sound like, it sounds like it could be potentially intrusive, right? So then there's that balance of how personal do you want to be in content marketing versus how your audience is going to feel and if that's going to be the norm in the future. So I would think that hyper-personalization is going to be a trend that we will be seeing. That's number one. The second thing is, I think that there will be a lot more AI clones. I tried using a couple of AI tools before, like TWICE, T-W-I-S-E, where I created an AI version of myself, right? So it sounds like me. It, you know, interacts like me. And what I did was to upload a huge, load of my own knowledge base into the AI avatar. And that is something that I feel a lot of people haven't fully explored. But in the future, knowledge is going to be something that isn't just here. Right? It could be in an AI avatar where you're combining your own knowledge with even the AI's expertise on the different knowledge bases you're training it on, right? And that allows people to engage with, you know, individuals in different ways. So imagine if I had an AI avatar and I gave people access to my avatar, you know, for a certain fee. That could even be a new monetization model. That could be a new lead generation model. That could be a new income stream. There are so many different ways that we could see the future play out in terms of knowledge exchange. So these are the two things that I think I'm excited about. Of course, still a little bit nervous and apprehensive, but I think we will see what what plays out because in the world of AI, everything is changing every day. That's right. And, and I'm just as excited as you. Those are two really, really smart and exciting trends that I, I couldn't agree more. Those, those are definitely on the horizon. I've got just one more question for you, Audrey. A lot of our listeners are relatively new to AI. They're just starting to get up to speed. They're trying to keep track of what's the difference between a different large language model and another and which tools to use. And they're just starting. They would love to know your advice, just one actionable tip, if they want to apply AI to improve their content quality and their relevance, what would you suggest? Don't rely on AI by itself. Always have your human in the loop. So I like to use like the burger method where it's like, you know, you have the bread, human, then you have the testy AI, and then you have another, you know, slice of bread, right? It's a giant burger, human, and then AI and a human again, right? So you can see even when I'm speaking, my own thought processes are broken into steps, right? So by being able to take myself out from the workflow and look at my own workflow in a really critical manner, I can then decide where to add AI into my workflow, right? But I'm always checking that every single step and at every single point in time, there's always that human in the loop. This ensures that you are really getting quality content you are still activating here what's in your mind and you're able to apply that critical thinking skill while using AI to basically streamline that process. What you don't want to do is to rely on AI 
to come up with the end result and not review the work. So don't take AI's work as is. Really add that human in the loop and that's how you ensure quality while increasing your productivity. Terrific advice. That kind of echoes something we talked about in Sunny Hunt in our, in our previous episode where she was saying, always, always, always verify everything that the AI is telling you. Don't just accept any kind of output as gospel truth, particularly if it's including statistics and quotes and, and, and data. So you just don't know if that's accurate. So having that, that sandwich approach is terrific advice. Audrey, you have been an absolute delight. Really appreciate you for folks who want to connect with you, maybe ask you more questions. Where can they go? Yeah, well, I am always on LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is Audrey Chia. You can find me there and you will see like a mini rocket ship at the end of my name. So you can find me there. Or if you would like, you can visit closewithcopy.co, closewithcopy.co, where I work with clients on high converting landing pages, ads, and content strategy. Brilliant. We will have all of Audrey's links and information in the show notes. Now, I mentioned a moment ago, some of you are kind of new to AI and marketing. For those of you who kind of resonate with what I just said there, I've got a primer, a complete ebook to help you get started with AI and marketing. The link in the show notes, you can download it for free and get yourself up to speed so that you don't feel overwhelmed and you don't feel like you're being left behind. But that's all we've got for today, friends. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you all of you for listening. Don't forget to find us on Apple and leave us a review. Until next time, welcome to The Grid. Thanks for joining us on AI and Marketing Unpacked. I hope today's episode has inspired you and given you actionable insights to integrate AI into your marketing strategies. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and consider leaving a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts and answer any questions you might have. Don't forget to join us next time as we continue to simplify AI and help you make a real impact in your marketing efforts. Until then, keep innovating, see just how far AI can take your marketing. Thank you for listening and have a fantastic day. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Henneke Watkins Porter hosts the Entrepreneurial You, empowering entrepreneurs with insights on leadership, business, and success. Henneke, tell listeners what to expect from your show. So we provide innovative business strategies and practical solutions to common entrepreneurial challenges. And where can people subscribe? Find us at HennekeWatkinsPorter.com as well as the Marketing podcast network at marketingpodcast.net or search for it wherever you get your podcasts. You heard her. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.